Joining us now are David Bonson from Hightower's Bonson Group and Ivan Feinseth from Tigris Financial Partners. Talk a little bit more about the stock. Guys, thank you both for joining us. Um, David, you just took a position uh, in IBM. So what are you thinking about the quarter and the reaction? Well, obviously, we're going to want to digest a little more thoroughly the, the results here. But I mean, our position is very much intended to be more strategic and long term. From a top down standpoint, it plays into our theme this year of the rotation from growth into value. But I think bottom up, there actually is an incredibly compelling story here. We're big dividend growth folks, as, as you know, we talk about all the time. They have a 43% dividend payout ratio right now going into growing revenues. They've kind of stopped okay. the bleeding of those shrinking revenues and going into growing free cash flow. So to me, you have incredible opportunity for dividend growth starting off of a base of a 3.6% yield. So we like the financial metrics of this company. And then strategically, okay. it depends on execution. But that story of what they're doing in AI, blockchain, cloud, you're not paying for it. You're buying the stock on their mainframe business, and you have this kind of call option on some of the more exciting growth opportunities. What's not to like? Ivan, what's not to like? Actually, I've been neutral on IBM for some time, and this is uh, their first positive quarter. They had year-over-year -year growth for the first time in 22 quarters, and uh, their key business drivers, cognitive, cognitive solutions, and uh, cloud services are growing significantly. I think uh, Cognitive Solutions was up 24% year over year, and uh, cloud services up almost 30% year over year. So these are their future growth drivers. Are you getting off your neutral? I am becoming more positive. I, I think that they are turning a corner. And they also are announced a big stock buyback at the end of last year, and they probably will continue to consistently increase their dividend. David, wondering just the right way to think about how the stock ultimately could be valued if people get persuaded that maybe you have some, uh, some, a path toward organic growth. I've always thought, very simplistically, that somewhere within IBM is a business that looks a lot like Accenture. Right? Accenture trades at 24 times earnings. I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I'm not saying that IBM as a whole gets there, but what's the path to getting the stock revalued, do you think? I think it's two things. I mean, you're sitting at about 14 times right now, so you have significant undervaluation relative to even similar peer groups, because I grant it's probably not identical, but it's not a bad analogy. Um, I think that Stephanie said earlier that they're not a big beneficiary of tax reform, and I don't totally agree, although I agree directly. Indirectly, Michael, I think that's where you get multiple expansion, is other companies that get instant expensing because of tax reform IBM benefits from that. I think that there's significant technology expenditures coming for, as a result of the whole tax reform portfolio that IBM is a beneficiary of. That drives PE expansion. Ivan, what about this concern that they're actually one of the companies who'll see their tax rate go up this year? Uh, no, I actually agree you? with what David just said. Now, their effective tax rate has been like 13%. But uh, the companies that are their customers will see a significant drop in their effective tax rate, giving them more cash flow to invest in technology. What so this actually could be positive for IBM. There's a little pressure on profit margins, too. Is that an area that you'd be focused on as a potential concern? And, and what about their guidance, which I think we talked about is about 1380, a slight miss maybe relative. Some, some had thought maybe over 14. Street was looking for a little bit over that number. I really don't care about the gross margin on sales. The margin I look at is their economic profit margin, the spread on return on capital versus cost of capital. As long as that is starting to increase, that's going to have much greater impact on the stock going forward. And uh, guidance always starts off the year cautious, and hopefully things continue to ramp up. They see future growth, further growth in their two key dro growth drivers, cognitive solutions and cloud services. And I think that will continue to accelerate. All right, shares down three and a half percent. David, I'm just, you know, as long as the core plank of your argument isn't blockchain, you know, and what, <laughs> well, didn't we, see, we, we, they're in the blockchain uh, Oh, yeah, I believe ETF, it's in one of the blockchain they? ETFs, yeah. yes, alongside Citigroup. Uh, yeah, that's David the most definitely not the core of the argument, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us, uh, Mr. Bonson and Mr. Feinset.